All right. I am really psyched to be back at Ology, and I am really excited for today's episode and today's guest. Uh, I was born, raised, and have always lived uh, in New England. And we are sturdy, independent stock, and we take pride in our self-reliance, uh, almost to a fault. Uh, I also came of age in the 90s when uh, the singer-songwriter revival was happening and folk music kind of came to mean less of what it had traditionally meant, which, you know, I would kind of loosely define it as, you know, uh, common heritage of songs that are, uh, you know, handed down through the generations and uh, altered uh, with each passing down. And folk music came to be, at least where I was uh, up here in Boston, kind of more associated with the originality of, um, of a single voice. And, and the singer-songwriter was, was king. Bands were not, bands were fr frowned upon. Uh, and if you were a singer-songwriter that brought a band uh, to a venue, uh, God help you. Um, it, was, it was a time. So as a young man, I always felt um, that co-writing, it, it just felt wrong to me for several reasons. It felt like, I don't know, it was a way that maybe people used to play to a more commercial product, kind of songwriting by committee sort of thing. Uh, and it was just also counter to that whole um, Yankee spirit of, of uh, you know, self-sufficiency and, and, and the independence that I was talking about before. But um, there does come a time when, and there did come a time when I got stuck or when a friend of mine would get stuck and would ask me for help, uh, which I've now come to realize you know, just how brave a step that is to, to kind of reach out to someone um, and ask them to, to kind of join you in the creation of something. And I came to find out that um, when I was writing with people, not as a way to like come up with a hit, uh, or as some kind of, you know, kind of simply commercial endeavor, but as a way to make a song where we could not make a song otherwise. Um, I found that I loved it, and um, not as a better way to do things, per se, but just as another kind of arrow in my songwriting quiver. And uh, you're going to need a lot of arrows uh, the longer you do this. So uh, I've co-written um, a bunch of songs now people like Katie Curtis and Jeffrey Foucault, uh, Anja Duvacott, uh, Julie Lee down in Nashville, um, and even wrote a song with Lori McKenna and Ron Sexsmith. Um, but there is one guy, one artist that I have written with more than anyone else, and uh, you might know him as a mainstay of the Boston music scene. You might know him as a member of the Catbirds or the Funky White Honkies or if you've not seen him with those outfits, you've surely seen him with Session Americana, the Boston institution. And uh, I wanted to talk with my friend Dinty Child today about, uh, about co-writing. So I'm going to go back here and uh, find Dinty and see if I can bring him in. And uh, let's see. How did I do this again? All right. Oh, I'm out of practice, Dent. Here we go. Boom. Sent you an invite. Let's see how this works. It's connecting. Hey, hey. hey, there's the man. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. I am great. Look at you with your natural light there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you physically located right now? You know, I'm physically located. We literally moved back to Cambridge after five months about a half hour ago. Oh, so this is great timing for my new new timing here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's oh, uh, like it's... landing and then uh, I'll stay out of that song. I like landing and uh, and having this to do, having, having you to talk to. That's great. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, I was just trying to kind of go through our like little personal history here. And I believe that the first song that we co-wrote um, together was, was 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds about right. Because it came out on a record that was released uh, in 2016 for a song. And uh, so we would have recorded that record uh, in May of 2015. Okay. And since we wrote at the island in the month of June, it would have had to have been written, written the previous year, 2014. So 
I think I got the archaeology, the, the phonology here worked out. All right, Sherlock, we, we, we solved the mystery. That's good. <laughs> now, had you done a lot of co-writing before we wrote that song together? And, and the song I'm talking about is, is, is Look Up, which we'll get to more in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I always have, really. I mean, uh, well, I always have in so much as I've never written a whole lot of songs. Um, so... But really, almost from the beginning, it was probably half co-write and half uh, half just me. But I mean, I'm talking about like one or two songs every three or four years, kind of thing. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. So. And you, you've always been kind of. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but my impression of you has been always a, a very kind of collaborative sort of artist. I mean, it, it took you a while to kind of really step out and do even just your first record under your own name. You think? <laughs> <laughs> How long was it? I think it's a record. And 64 years. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I was thinking about this, knowing that we were going to talk, and I was, for me, I was really thinking that, that uh, co-writing, for me, is, is, is like, there's sort of three main reasons, and one is that I'm just, I'm kind of a collaborator by nature. Um, I've never, ever been someone who practices or sits around at home and much and plays. Um, I bought a four track cassette tape recorder in the mid eighties and used it exactly once. <laughs> uh, don't record at home. I, I just don't do any of those things and never really have, but um, you get me, get me in a room with, some other bodies and I'm, and I'm all over it and I'm having a great time. And yeah. I think that's one reason like throughout, even like raising kids, I see one of my kids is in there, um, raising kids and, and, and working to pay the rent and all that stuff. Um, I always said yes to music like gigs and whatever, because it's the way I played. Um, yeah. and it's the way I created and, and did my thing. So, um, I would, you know, I, I wrote some songs and like some, uh, there's a, at least a couple on the new record that I think are from like 40 years ago, you know, or more. Oh. Um, but uh, I think those were, no, one of them was, was kind of a co-write. So, you know, there's been a little bit, it was mostly with this, with one guy. Have you met, have you met Bat, Bill? Oh, yeah. 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 It was mostly with him. Um, oh, interesting. So it wasn't like a, a wide cross section of artists. It was it was kind of a relationship, like almost yeah. exclusive. Yeah, and then there were some other some other folks I played with that we that we wrote together. But like I said, it was never a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. and it's only really been the last what you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years or something that I started to really write more songs. But um, yeah, but I think I think you win. I think our our our, <laughs> our co-write numbers. Are the, are the top of the list. So. Well, I know I win because if I had written no other song, either co-written or, or by myself, other than Look Up, our first song together, I, I, that to me, like, you could just quit after doing something like that. I'm really glad we didn't. But no, no. I, I feel like I won the, the lottery with that song. And I thought it would be interesting, at least as a jumping off point, to kind of start... Um, and, and let people know a little bit of how it came to be. Because um, it, it does have an interesting story. Um, will you kind of help spearhead this songwriting retreat every year um, up on this island in Lake Um right. And we don't want to talk too much about it because we don't want everyone to get jealous, but it's pretty awesome. It's as awesome as it sounds. <laughs> awesome as it sounds. And it figures heavily into the mythology of us and a lot of other people. So. Absolutely. There's so many collaborations and songs that come out of that, that annual uh, week in June. And um, I had been slated to come the year before in 2013, and we had a, a bit of a family emergency at the, at the last minute, and I had to, had to bow out. But um, I'd always wanted to go. I'd always had, like, young kids, and just taking a week to, to just write songs felt like an unallowable luxury. But I finally got to the point in 2014 where I could... Um, get up there and write. And, you know, I, as I was saying, I'm a 
primarily a solo writer, but and I went up there with ideas that I'd kind of been holding on to. But you get to this point where you um, you you run out of steam on those ideas, and I didn't want to waste that week. I, I felt like I had to come home with something, right. you know. And so I thought, okay, I, you know, at the very least, if I run out of gas on my own stuff, I can I can co-write with people. And there are. 14 or 15 other amazing artists, many of them very close friends up there that I could have asked. Um, but my, I zeroed in on you because of, um, of two songs of yours um, okay. and very different songs. The first one is Yankee Money um, yeah. that, that you wrote um, and sing with um, Session Americana. Yeah. I love that song because it just sounds like this lost kind of outtake from the second band record, you know, yeah. like a really good band record, you know, it does, to me, it, does, it feels that way. Uh, you don't have to agree. Uh, and then the second song was, I think, one of the, uh, a co-write with, with your friend back there was, was Beer Town. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Right? So I, I thought, like, and both of those in their own way are kind of anthems, you know, these kind of very rootsy anthems, and I thought, okay, I want to write like a rootsy, like raise your pint glass down the road <laughs> or the lizard kind of anthem with, with Dinty. It doesn't have to be about beer, but I just, I need that kind of gang kind of community uh, celebratory kind of feel. And so I, I, I asked you and you graciously, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you graciously accepted, except when you showed up at my, at my cabin and we sat around my fire circle, you said, Okay. What? Tell me what. Tell the people what you told me. Well, I, I believe when I, I think it actually started earlier. You pointed at me. I don't know at one of the meals around the porch. Said, "Hey, I want to. I want to co-write with you." And I said, "Great. It's going to be a song about the janitor of the Sistine Chapel called Look Up." <laughs> <laughs> so we Very got specific. That's yeah. Where we started. Yeah, and I remember. I remember thinking like. Oh shit! Like that's not what I that. <laughs> I, what do I do with that? Who? I have never even been to Italy. I mean, I'm Italian, but I've never been to Italy, uh, and I don't know anything about the Sistine Chapel. And I remember thinking, like, oh my god! I, I one of my strategies for co-writing is I kind of like to come in. I've gone in a couple times just cold with a, a completely clean slate, but I, I do like to kind of come in with ideas. Um, sure. And, um, you know, you said that to me over dinner, and I, I, I just had nothing, I had nothing. <laughs> and you showed up, and we sat down, and we, I don't even remember how we started. I don't remember how we started. Do you? Um, I, you know, well, I had the idea because I think the year, either earlier that year, or earlier in that week, or maybe I think it was the year before. Um, you know, I, I I work at the island some. I, I help take care of it, and I was it's this beautiful place, and I was sweeping the dock or something like that. And somebody said, "How are you doing?" And I was like, oh, "I'm all right," but I just have to remember to look up every once in a while because there's mountains and water and stuff. And so I th kind of thought, and oh, and I said, I, "Yeah, I feel like the janitor at the Sistine Chapel." I just have. <laughs> stop and look up every once in a while and that's where it came from yeah it sat with me so when you said something it's like yeah let's do this um and i think you know i just think we started with with the janitor let's imagine this guy you know yeah. and, and what's his life like and okay he's what is what the lines uh are what all all, all day long they shuffle through sneakers i think we had loafers high yeah. heels shoes yeah, snacks of paper, uh, scraps of paper, chewing gum. I, you know, and and what I remember is it was very much the lyrics for that song. You have you were holding the guitar, so the music yeah. was a little more you, and the but the lyrics it was like very much back and forth, line 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 line, and we kind of got to the end of his verse, and then it was like okay, well now now what? And I sort of thought okay, that's that guy. Now we'll to somebody else who who needs to remember to look up and somehow this will all tie in yeah. and but we 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 googled Sistine Chapel and started to read about it and 
then we realized that uh, Michelangelo had written. Um, it was uh, he had he had written a sonnet about how miserable he was yeah. painting this thing, yep. and, and how the the the, the paints falling in his face. I think we even used some of his words, yeah. and um, and how also he he didn't feel worthy of the work, kind of. Um, anyway, and so that's what I recall. So we, and then we sort of went from there. And then, of course, <laughs> <laughs> so we were, got the janitor. And then we've got Michelangelo. And we were like, we we have to change the the, the frame and, and pull the frame out even more. Like, well, where do you go after the janitor down here? Um, you can't even see it. The janitor down here. Then Michelangelo, like, kind of looking first up. up is yeah. the big man. Like, you got to talk about God. And I, I just remember thinking, like, loving what we had musically and loving the, the fact that it was not a song um, from a single protagonist point of view, which is, is generally the, the rule for me. I'm, I had never written a song like this before. Um, and I, I remember thinking, I like this too much to, to, uh, to let this go, to not finish this. And we have, at the end of the day... Uh, in this retreat, you know, we have dinner together, and then at the at, after dinner and cleanup, we sit down in this big circle and we we share and play for each other uh, what we have written. And this was my first year there, and I just I, I, it was everything I'd hoped it would be. And I and I love I love that moment of being there for the first public presentation of the song. It feels right. like witnessing a, your friend like a birth. You know, it's all isn't it? Yeah, it's miraculous. I mean, it's truly miraculous. And I remember thinking, like, I'll be damned if we let this thing go and don't get it done in time to hear for the song circle. It took and us all. It took us all day, and we, we'd stop and we'd yeah go for walks either alone. I remember like going to pee in the woods or something. Coming yeah. back, and like, well, what about you know? I sent them plague, the flood, the fire, and it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you think of weird things when you go to the bathroom in the woods, but I like it. <laughs> no, we do some of our best work when we're going to see A Man About a Horse, uh, for sure. Um, and I remember we started at, like, my fire pit, and then we moved over to this other building, and then we ended up on a porch somewhere. And just, I think at one point, I, I might have taken, a, uh, or both of us maybe took our own individual walks around the whole perimeter of the island, just trying to any trick to shake yep. things loose you know yeah, that was true we sat and on but yeah and and I, I don't even really remember the the final moment when it fell into place but i remember uh, it took us about eight and a half hours of, of pretty <laughs> much constant constant work yeah and, um and i think as you as you mentioned before we changed i believe it was just that one word from loafers to sandals um, yeah which you know in a song that's that big and that existential i think it's hysterical that we were just focused on like well the shoe wear doesn't feel right you know sandals <laughs> is better <laughs> i was thinking italian loafers you know but like tourists in their sandals in their black socks you know it was definitely better with sandals and uh sneakers and sandals of course has the uh has the alliteration so yeah. That was our first. That was our first song together. And man, I, I think we both said like, if we had stopped there, it probably would have been fine. You know, like it, I'm just, I'm so, I'm proud of that song. I am in awe of it. Uh, I think I've told you this before, but I'll tell everybody else. Like, you know, in the before times when I had gigs, I, you know, I would rehearse for my own gigs. I'd play my own songs in my own house. I'm, I'm a rehearser. Uh, and um, I would be sitting here alone while the kids were at school playing Look Up in my dining room or whatever I happened to be singing. And I would lose track of where I was for like four and a half minutes. I just, I would finish that song and I'm, I'm playing for ostensibly no, no one maybe. Um, and I would just lose like every time. It's, it's like a magical portal to, um, 
to some place I wish I could just kind of live in, but maybe it's maybe it's all the better because we, we can only visit it occasionally. Well, I think we felt like that when we finished it. We were both kind of thunderstruck of like, what did we just write? This is not. A, I didn't no, see. No. I didn't see it going there, and that's the beauty of the co-write thing, right? Because you're sort of. I mean, you might get there on your own, but when you're with somebody else, they can really kind of. I don't know. They're just throwing things that you might not have thought of, and all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, whoa, that's that's crazy. I, I absolutely agree. I mean, that was one of the things that I thought to talk about. Um, like, I think in in the kind of more commercial like co-writing opportunities, like in Nashville, like obviously there's some amazing writers, just both inspired mm -hmm. writers and just with an utter mastery of, of the craft there. And I, but I think that sometimes, I suspect that some writers get brought in to like inject a certain thing, like their thing into right. whatever is being written. Sure. Um, but I always feel, I often feel like I, when I co-write a song, I'm, I'm there because I couldn't, have, in the first place, because I couldn't have gotten there on my own. If I could do it on my own, I would have just done it. And right. It would have been easier. Um, there's something about co-writing that I feel like, as you as you said before, that you can you can just get to it. It's like standing on someone's shoulders. You can see further down the road or something. It's, mm -hmm. I love that part of it. I love how it unlocks things that you, you know, rooms in your, in your interior mind that you didn't even know were there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, and, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier about, like, the three co-writing things. And I know that the second one that I had thought of was, I mean, for me now, we have that retreat. And, and I don't tend to do stuff on my own. I don't know whether it's, I don't know, discipline, whatever. I, it's whatever. But we, we set aside that week, and that's what we're there to do. And that's when I do a lot of my writing now, and I'm sure that's true for all of us. Um, and, but the beauty of that is that um, you, you might have an idea for a song, you might have a little something, and, it, and it's like, oh, that sounds like a Dave Kodowski song, or that, that sounds like a, let's see, I'm, I need deep emotions on this one. Hey, where's Rose Cousins? Uh, it, like, um, you just, talk about your toolkit you have this huge yeah. toolkit at your disposal um and i mean i people could do that anytime it just happens that we're all in one location so we can say hey you yes. let's tomorrow afternoon and and uh and we do that right it's like it's like all right meet at two o'clock tomorrow and we'll we'll see what we can come up with it's like because i was gonna I, I think i asked you about this before and i don't remember what you said on your record um uh <laughs> uh, lost in translation. Yeah, yeah. So, so the first line is uh, the silence in the house in this house tonight is deafening. And if I had written that, I would say Dave Godowski wrote this because that's uh, kind of how his songs are. Yeah. But I said you actually wrote that line. I think so. I think I had. Um, I think I had a decent start on that one um, before I brought Dave into it. Uh, and, and I, you know, that actually brings up a really good point because if there's something about co-writing that just forces you to be uh, less selfish, to just kind of let go of, um, you know, certain parts of your ego or, or the entire thing, you know? Um, there are times when I've had a song where it's like, no, I, mine. You know, <laughs> but for the most part, when I'm co-writing, it's like sometimes I bring people come in like on right in on the idea at the top. But other times, I mean, I've had people come in um, after I'd written a draft of a song like that. My song French King that I wrote with um, with Jeffrey Focal. I didn't write it with him in the sense that we've written a lot of our stuff when we were sitting um, across from each other. Like I'd written a draft of the song that I was like. A minus happy with and I was like it's a great song by the way thanks but I was like it needs to be a plus and so I need <laughs> to send it to Jeff and he will be merciless with his editing and he was so merciless with his editing that it turned into like a 
lyrically a substantially uh, different song. And at that point, you have to decide, right? Like, I created this thing that I really kind of liked, but Jeff helped me create this alternative version of it that's better. And, you, you know, you have to be a big enough, generous enough person and artist uh, to, to just kind of let go of that other thing and swim toward the new, <laughs> the new horizon. You know? Right. Well, I mean, we, we do that for each other, right? I mean, we've written some, so I had the idea for look up, but other than that, it was pretty 50, 50. Like I said, you were holding the guitar. So maybe the music is more you, um, the morning that's on my record. That was one where we, we just had, we, we had a little bit of time. I forget what was happening, but we, it's like, we got a half hour. Let's see if we can write a song. And I think I, that was one of my, I had something on my phone that we, mm -hmm. it's like, let's do that. And we would have done it in 20 minutes if Godowski hadn't interrupted us on time. <laughs> but then we have other songs where we have a lot of it. I had uh, The Fall of the Summer of Love also on my record, but I just didn't know how to get into the lyrics. And so I, I got you to help me with that. Um, which was ironic because you're not old enough to remember the summer of love, and I had to explain it all to you. Uh, <laughs> now, and two people love each other very much, Mark. <laughs> and, and then on your record, both uh, uh, "Rose Colored Rearview" and, and "Western Veil," vale, you basically kind of had the songs, but you you just needed help getting them over the line. Um, yeah, that's a frequent thing with me. And and even with those two in particular, there I remember them being very different. I think I had a very, very clear idea of my first verse in Western Vale and of the, the kind of musical motif. But I I remember you coming in in the second and third verses to kind of help me shape the imagery and kind of keep... I, I remember telling you, like, I need to keep this impressionistic. Like, don't let me over-explain this, you know? And, and so I remember you being a big help there. Rose Color Rear View was, was another one of those songs where I had written it. Um, and I just, I knew that I hadn't said what I was trying to say yet in that last verse. And I was kind of trying, I was chasing my tail until the morning that I recorded it. But yeah. um, I remember bringing you in on that last verse and, and um, just saying like, I, you know, it's mostly done. I just need a little help. And you were very generous. With your time, I think you even came over to my house back when we did that. Yeah. I came to your house and we spent the morning. You had to fly out that afternoon to Nashville to like make the record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know you kept texting me things. I remember as I landed, I you kept texting me like all these missed texts of, or you could do this or this. And honestly, I remember for that one that um, the only line of all the all the wonderful things that you had suggested to me was uh, uh that uh, of yours that i actually used was and we all watched the same screen but we didn't see the same thing and i remember thinking yes that's that is so tr it felt so true and so real all at once and it wasn't that was not one of the things that i was i was kind of stuck on the racial dimension of it and how to and how to kind of comment on that uh, as a as a white male um, but your issue your suggestion of we're all looking at the same screens but we're not seeing the same thing because of our experience and because of who we are that unlocked the re the rest of that last it was really just the latter half of the verse it was maybe the last three or four lines but it, you know th that's an example of the whole range of the gamut of how usually how so songs can be co-written I'm not sure that they always happen with the same people. It's like some people you might write really quickly with, some people you might labor over things with more with. We seem to have the entire gamut. Of like so not, 20 minutes, let's write a song to, oh my God, that just took us eight and a half hours. You know? like, well, I also like that. I, I think I think that we're destined to keep doing it. Well, I mean, we have good incentive, right? From the first one, it's like, well, absolutely. We should, now we know just owe it to ourselves to, to take a stab at something. But what, what was the, the one we wrote last year uh, feels like the first time. Mm -hmm. And you like, out of the blue, I don't know how many months ago you said, you know, I think in that uh, one verse, we, instead of and, we should say, you know, it was like, again, it was like one little preposition or something that you yeah. thought was 
But I think like that too, you know, I'll be singing the songs like that doesn't sit quite right, you know, and, and we'll, we're, we're both willing to kind of go there as well. So I think that's why the thing works pretty well with us. That's a really interesting point too, because, um, most, I think mostly I've written songs more with more with female artists than with male artists. Um, and one of the things that I, I am really cognizant about uh, when I write songs with, with, especially with female artists, is um, to not mansplain their own songs to them. You know, <laughs> like I don't want I don't want them to feel like they they can't offer something or that they can't stand up for something that they suggest. And so um, at times I, I kind of am on tenterhooks a little bit, just trying to, no, that's not the right, that's not the right metaphor, what tenterhooks is like. I don't even know what a tenterhook. I don't know either. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I tread lightly because I don't want to, I don't want anyone's um, feelings to be hurt. I don't want them to feel like I'm not valuing their contributions. And um, so there's sometimes when I will read, a, I'll, will come up with a line and I'll think like that's, that needs to be tweaked and, and, and tightened up a little bit. And I will deliberately like let it pass just to kind of keep the flow going. And then several weeks later, I'll say, Hey, you know, been thinking more about this great song of ours and you know right. what, what do you think about this and so i think sometimes those that editing process I and mean, then oftentimes the editing process and the writing process are, are best when they're decoupled i think it's kind of rare to find people that can do both with each other at the same time and not feel like you know they're hurting each other's feelings or something have you done the uh, the real sort of nashville people you don't know sit in a room try to come up with a song thing i i've never i can't i don't i've never done that and i don't i just don't know how that work that sort of co you know co-writing works at all yeah i did it once uh once or twice um and it's you know it, it's that's an interesting thing because the whole commercial dimension um or potentially commercial dimension kind of messes with my head. Um, when I'm writing up here in New England, uh, I try to take my all the pressure off myself at the moment of creation so that there's nothing kind of screwing with my, my emotions and my brain. So if I'm co-writing a song with someone, I, I tell myself, this is not my song, this is their song. I'm just helping them get there. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to worry about it if it feels like it's not exactly my your uh, individual voice of myself because it's they're going to be the one to put it on their record maybe um and also the writing up here in new england where there's literally no connection between music and money um <laughs> you know it's tragic but it's also wonderful because it's, yeah. it doesn't complicate things uh, and you don't ever have to think like should we can we do this like would they play this on the radio it's like fuck it i don't care no one's playing anything on the radio. Let's just write the song, you know? And then afterwards, you can be pleasantly uh, proved wrong. You know, I've written right. songs with, like, uh, well, I think we've both written with Susan Catania, a wonderful writer here yeah. in Boston, yeah. a professor over at uh, Berkeley College of Music. And I know for myself, I, we, we wrote The River Always Wins together, which is on Blindside, and I remember thinking, like, this is for her record, and it did go on her record first, and I actually played on the song, on the track. Oh, wow. And, but then I just couldn't get it out of my head, and I right. was like, well, now now I want to take a crack at it. Well, that, that to me is the highest thing, because the, the one thing I have found co-writing is that, I don't know, for me, I, I, I'm, I guess it must be different if you're really just trying to pump out a hit or something or write for somebody, um, but it works much better if it's a song that one of you is going to sing. To to me, you know, it's like I had a a song that again needed some deep emotion, and I I asked Rose Cousins, and I got way more than I bargained for. And it's just like, well, she's not going to sing the song, and I I don't want to sing the 
song. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's unrecorded? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's unrecorded. And I would say it's on, on, it's not, yeah, I don't, I can't, anyway. But, um, but the, but the point is that if, if you write a song and then both of you want to sing it, that's, especially male, female, that's amazing. That's, that's, yeah. that's great. You know, that's, that's, um, that's the sign of a, of a good song, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for covering, uh, when the dark clouds roll away on, on one of your, oh, one of your, yeah. One of your streams, you know. I love that song. I love that song. Um, yeah, that was another one that well, had that been written by two to two thousand fourteen. Oh yeah. So um, it was the actually Dietrich and I figured this out the other night. It, that was written the third year of the retreat. So and I think so. I think that was two thousand twelve. Okay. 12. Right. Yeah, because I had heard that song too, and that's yet another one where it's like this: these songs just sound like they've been around forever, and you just kind of like found them on a rock that in the forest somewhere, and just dug it up and brought it home with you, and that, now it's your song. You well, that's, you know, if if you want that kind of song, you you ask Sean Staples. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's like having again having the toolkit there. It's like I had the song. But it needed more lyrics and and, and stuff, and it's like, well, I I want this to be like a classic sounding song, and so I got him. And you mentioned Yankee Money before, and Sean helped me with the bridge on that. Oh. So that really a co-write of Staples and I too, even though I had, you know, ninety percent of the song or something like that. But yeah. uh, so if you want that kind of a song, you get Sean Staples. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to have to bring him into the mix next year and. and you got to if you haven't written with Sean yet, you got to do it. No, I can't believe I haven't written with Sean because we've known each other for, uh, I mean, one count the years, uh, and I'm such a huge fan of his writing and uh, and him personally. But um, for some reason, we've just never never gone there. It's like that. Um, it's a similar thing with with Laurie McKenna. You know, she's. Uh, we kind of both came up at that time of like the '90s singer songwriter, which with everyone just kind of being their own kind of unique individual voice. And then of course she went on to, you know, huge, huge co-writing fame. And, and I'm, I'm right there. I've got her number. I can call her up and ask her to write any time. And we, we tried a couple times. Um, and, uh, and it just, for whatever reason, it, it, we did write one song together with Ron Sexsmith, which I really loved. Um, but other than that, it, it never really, really, felt like it kind of clicked and, and as great a writer as she is as as much as I'd like to think that I'd bring to the table it just it didn't seem like that was in the cards for us and so I said okay I'm just I'm gonna be the side man like emotional support guy with you you know but it's it's hard to know like that how it's going to work or if it's going to work and in a place like Nashville where it happens every day sometimes two sessions a day yeah, people have appointments. I've got a ten o'clock co-write. And yeah, got a like a two or three, and I, you know, there's part of that that when I was growing up just felt a little bit factory-like and a little bit impersonal. But now that I'm older, I realize that it's it, it really is just a, a matter of probabilities. You know, if you, if you write, if if let's say only like a half a percent of the songs you write are really great. Well, the only way to write more great songs is to just write a ton more. And, you know, a half a percent of a thousand songs is actually a lot right. of great songs. <laughs> well, I mean, that happened with me the first when I've written two with Susan Catania now that I, I really like the songs. Um, but we didn't know each other very well, you know, but she just said, hey, you know, I like your songs. You want to try writing together? And it's like, yeah, OK, let's let's try that. And. Uh -oh. pleased with the songs we ended up with um yeah and uh so it, i guess it doesn't really matter I, I see a question from micah asking yeah if, if if it's um weird when somebody changes one of your songs i don't know that i've had that experience too much um Della may did uh I, I sort of gave a song that Sean and I wrote called uh, Bluebird Blackbird to them because it was like this kind of 
bluegrass song and um, um, I, I wasn't going to be playing it. So I said, Celia, if you, if you, Celia's an old friend. I said, if you want this, um, uh, you guys can do it. And that's great. But she did, she, she changed it a little bit. And both Sean and I went, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that, you know, and I'm, but they play it all over the world. And I'm really glad about that. But it is the yeah. thing that you have to kind of go, okay, well, that's their take on it. And then when I do it, I'll do it a different way, you know. I'll Absolutely. My- it, it is a process of, of letting go uh, in a way, you know, kind of right from the very beginning, both with, um, you know, the collaboration and the decision to collaborate in the first place, you know, letting go of the, um, of the, the solo voice and, um, and, and bringing someone else in. And then once you're kind of navigating those, uh, you know, the, those interactions and writing the song, you have to let go of certain images or certain approaches that you, you know, might initially go with. Um, and then when it gets cut, you have to let go even further, you know, I mean, it's, in some ways, it's just a process of continuing to learn how, how, little in charge you actually are (laughs) how little control you have of anything um and i think i don't know if i would ever tell like uh, ellis paul covered uh, a song of mine called the only way uh it was the first kind of real cover of anything i'd ever had by someone that i literally came up listening to so it was a big honor and Yet he didn't like the the central part of that song for me was this harmonica lick, this harmonica riff, and um, you know sometimes you cover a song you don't you maybe not do it exactly the same but you might take like a signature part and put it on a different instrument or something and kind of put your own stamp on it and he just they just didn't do the that that hook at all they gave it like a totally different hook and I remember hearing it the first time being like is is a track muted or something like they, they didn't they didn't like my harmonica part you know <laughs> but you know that's i think that's kind of getting lost in the weeds and 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 um in the minutiae that most you know most people don't necessarily hear or are aware of when they uh, are listening to music they're just listening to be moved or, or entertained and um and there's a lot of different ways to do that not necessarily the ones you just uh, intended, you know, when you wrote the song. So I think you do have to kind of, kind of write them and, and let them go. Right. But make sure they have you, your publishing information. <laughs> I think. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm walking around looking for power because my phone is getting low. Um, but um, no, it's it's really true. It's like you kind of have to let the songs be what they're going to be to whoever, you know. Is singing them yeah. to whoever has to do them. I think you know. Yeah, and, 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 just, and it's yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just to say that, like <laughs> <laughs> the Instagram delay. Uh, you know, it's the it's the um, whoever's name is on the record, right? I mean, your name will as the writer will be under the song and you know six point font or whatever. But like, if it's the the, the artist's name is on the cover. Their picture is on the cover. Like if they need to take a license that um, to make it feel like they have more uh, ownership of the song and that they can, um, you know, deliver it a little bit, you know, better uh, and the best that they can deliver it. I don't have a problem with that. And like you say, you know, if I feel really strongly it should be done a certain way, I'll just eventually do it myself that way, and, and right. that'll be fine. You know. Yeah. You know. I mean. I can't, I mean, I'm sure you're the same. I, I can't, I can't do all the songs. And so I'm just thankful if somebody's doing some of them. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, speaking of doing some, uh, doing some of your songs, we have a gig, to, a couple gigs to get ready we for have, this weekend. We have two gigs, Mark. And I was, I was thinking about this. Have we, have we ever really, I mean, we, we, we played together, like, you know, they, you know, singing these songs when they were written, but I don't know that we've really, and we've done group shows at Passim and stuff like that, but I don't know that we've really done a thing together. 
No, no, we haven't. Um, and I just, I'll say here kind of in, in closing, so before your power runs out. I, I'm um, plugged in now. I think I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just, it's such a, a, a treat and a privilege to kind of get under the hood of these songs and to try and find my own way into them and, and figure out where I can make a positive contribution and um, where I can cover what's already there and where I can add things that maybe aren't there but might be helpful in a live context. And uh, I've just been so excited about it. Um, we're going to be doing a live stream on Friday night, um, whatever that, is that the 18th, September 18th? Oh, I think I, I think we lost Dinty. No. All, there he is. All right. You're just frozen a bit. So Friday okay. night is the 18th, right, at um, the Narrows? The Nar yeah, that's the live stream from the Narrows, and it looks like we've got a stream section for that, too. Oh, so. amazing. Amazing. And then we have a gig up in New Hampshire, the Word Barn Meadow in Exeter, New Hampshire, um, on the Saturday the 19th, and that's for actual human beings, which is Bodies. just incredible. Um, yeah. No, I, I can't wait. Um, and it was really seeing your show from the narrows with uh zach and uh, andrew stern that and just seeing musicians smiling at each other while they're playing it was like i got a little teary and was like i want to do that um yeah it's but I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled because you know they're, they're sort of these were uh at least the word barn was a reschedule from um april when we all thought well maybe we'll get to play then <clears throat> um but um, they're, so they're advertising it as an album release show for an album that got released in January. Um, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm just excited to play the songs that we wrote together, um, uh, you know, and, and, and get and get to do that and see what happens. We, you had you had asked me to do a co bill at uh, the Lizard Lounge July first, and I and then it was like, well let's just both use the same band. And since we're both used to being side guys, let's just both be side guys for the other guy. Yeah. And uh, so now finally it's coming to pass and I'm, I'm just so psyched. I love it. I love it. Um, it's so great to kind of give people a little bit of a, a behind the scenes kind of window on just one particular co-writing relationship that you and I have. And yeah. it's one that I treasure uh, so much. And when the pandemic kind of, uh, Kai Boshed our, our in-person songwriting retreat this year. Uh, I remember you were like, we still need to write a song together, and we did it. <laughs> we did. And that's that's safe song. Time and that song, that song a lot. I really like it a great deal. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's so, you know, that's whether we have a whole day or uh, 20 minutes or we got to do it over Zoom, we find a way to get it done. And uh, I, there's, there's not too many people I'd rather Right with so, and it's uh it's time tested at this point. We gotta we just gotta keep going. We the the one I mentioned when two years ago, and we sat by your fire, and it was like, okay, what are we gonna write about? I think it might be the only one that really came out of nothing. Um, like it wasn't out of your book or my book or on the one of our phones, and and it was like, what are, what are we gonna write? Why are we gonna write another song? There's so many songs. There are hundreds of songs. And and uh, and it was we wrote feels like the first time every time because it it does when you write a new song it just feels like the first time every time and it's and so you you just keep going right you you just like all right let's 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 write another one see what we get because you might get look up or you might get you know I don't know you might get one of these songs yeah show me the person that stops fishing after they catch one fish. You know? <laughs> There's, that's I never happened. I don't need to fish anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm done. Drop the rod. <laughs> rod it. drop. I love it. Oh, man. All right. Well, we just got a text from Zach while we were doing this about rehearsal tomorrow. So we'll get, we're going to get off and deal with that. And um, yeah, thanks, exactly. everybody, for tuning back in. And uh, we'll see you next week uh, on Wednesday at 5. That's great. What's your next ology? Do you know? I don't. I'm still trying to figure it out. I love ology, by the way. Plants. Uh, you know, you name it. Okay. That's great. A few ideas. We'll see who's available. <laughs> okay.
Well, folks, if you want to see these songs in action, tune in tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, Friday. 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 Yes. Friday. Not tomorrow. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you, Dave. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.